I've been making a lot of privacy conscious decisions as of recent and have been taking steps to tighten up my online privacy. A lot of people start out by replacing Windows with Linux and going from there. This is not going to be that video, this is going to be something much different. Over the past 6 months I've managed to do something pretty difficult. A lot of people tend to be very set in their ways and so doing what I did is going to be a large ask for most people. I have migrated my community from Discord to Element. Reason being that there are several flaws with Discord that we'll be discussing over the course of this video. Element does a lot to improve over Discord and I firmly believe that more people should switch over and start openly moving over their friends and communities to this new platform. Unfortunately, Discord is pretty much ubiquitous right now and it's what most people are using. However, over the course of this video I'm going to highlight some flaws with it as well as our experience with Element and how our transition to greener pastures went. We're going to be diving into some heavy topics here. Grab a snack, this video is going to be fairly involved. It's also going to be a bit of a pill to swallow for Nitro subscribers, as I'll be addressing what Discord Nitro features are in the default element experience. Without further ado, I'm Just Osh, and this is... First off, what is Element? Element is a chat client based on the Matrix.org protocol. It's the most popular Matrix client and it's also ran by the original group that founded Matrix.org. It's similar to Skype and Discord but it's notably different in how the UI looks. For example, along with setting an icon for the space you're in, you can also set icons for individual rooms. It's also got room search, voice chat and most of the basic features that you would expect. Just quickly, spaces and rooms are like servers and channels in Discord, except servers can house multiple spaces, servers can be self-hosted, and you can access public rooms from outside their original spaces. The big thing about Element, as well as the Matrix server protocol as a whole, is that both are free and open source. The free in free and open source means free as in freedom, also occasionally referred to as Libre software. This means a number of things. Generally, apps that are focused around privacy and security have to be free and open source by their nature. This is because people should know what their software is doing. By virtue of having the source code and being able to audit the code that the application is made out of, you can tell exactly what the code is doing and how it operates. Now, some people get this confused for having open and unsecure accounts, which is not what is going on. Rather, it's exclusively the protocol and the client software that is freely available to look at, use, and modify. If anything, Element security is tighter than Discord, as it openly uses end-to-end -end encryption and extra secure default settings in order to make Matrix accounts nigh impossible to brute force. This also lets you create altered versions of Element if you know the TypeScript programming language. You're just allowed to do whatever so long as you're willing to learn the programming language and ask some people how it's done. Contrast this with Discord. Whilst Discord does implement some open source software, it locks it away and doesn't let the people using it really see what's going on behind the scenes. You sort of just have to trust them, and later on in this video I'll be explaining why that is a big problem. But for now I want to pivot for a sec and just talk about what it's like jumping over to Element. So, I was initially recommended Element by one of my friends in early 2022. This was after I moved to Linux and was looking for a proper replacement to Discord that would give me a similar experience. Discord is accessible on Linux, but the perks listed previously were enough to get me to take a look-see. I actually really like Element, and whilst the UI layout takes a bit of getting used to, it's mostly intuitive and if you stop watching here, uh, don't by the way, then you have a good idea of how to use it going in. If you need spaces, they're on the far left side. This second left panel holds favourites, DMs for people from that space, and then other rooms. They're sorted by alphabetical order, so you don't get wildly different layouts and categories between different spaces. Another thing I was shocked by is that there is no character limit, and the upload limit for pictures, audio, and multimedia is 100 megabytes. This is all for free by the way, which puts into question if Nitro is actually worthwhile to use, especially in the case of uploading. 
I have also seen some friends freely use GIFs as their profile pictures on Element, and seen them move in Element's embedded Jitsi chat. Again, this really does call into question if Nitro is actually worth shelling out 5 bucks a month. Except that's for 50 megabytes. It's actually 10 bucks a month, or 100 US dollars a year, which works out to be $140 Australian for a free service, Jesus Christ. For superfluous shit like this, 100 megabyte uploads, which again is free on Element, and HD video streaming. Why? Just... Why? Ugh. Extra features aside, this makes Element a really nice application to actually use, and I feel that it's a good place to set up shop if you want privacy and community in the same place. It's the one place where you can actually have your cake and eat it too. Oh, and uh, speaking of privacy, let's talk about that. <laughs> I've been dropping hints in this video that Discord might not be all sunshine and rainbows, as much as the marketing will have you believe. It's really evident that the cheery facade is just a front for something much more sinister, and after I explain what's really going on, it's likely you'll see the platform in a much different light. Discord is a private company, which means that it has investors to please and other companies that are giving it extra money so it can operate at the scale it does. One of these investors goes by the name Tencent, and Tencent just so happens to essentially be the corporate branch of the Chinese Communist Party. If any of you know that name, you know exactly where this is going, and it's not pretty. China has a policy to collect data from all China-owned companies as part of the nation's surveillance laws. This includes all international citizens, no matter what country you reside in. This means by proxy, no matter who you are, what you say, or where you live, China is collecting everything you do on Discord. Yeah, no, it sounded crazy when I was learning about this. I could not believe this when I learned of it, but unfortunately, it's true. The CCP is mass harvesting data from Discord in order to spy on the citizens of other countries. It is an ongoing security problem. Okay, I can hear the I have nothing to hide remarks from here. Which is why you use your full name on everything, complete with IP address and location, and you unlock the door when you shower, right? Except you don't. You use a username so randoms can't track you. Since Discord staff and their investors are considered randoms and are demonstrably not good, that applies here too. Upset copium aside, first off, the less you use Discord, the less they can profile you and sell off your information. No way they're making enough money off of Nitro subscriptions to break even, so of course they're selling your data. Second is that people change, and as you use proprietary software less, such as Discord, the more outdated their profile of you will get. Given enough time with better habits, this can progress to the point where they are not sure if you even have the same details as your current self. Your interests and hobbies, as well as your address, computer specs, and browser are very much prone to change, and as long as you stay off Discord, they can't update their service to match. If you abandon your Discord account or even delete it, their profile view will cease to be useful to them. Third, is that whilst Discord doesn't have any censorship now, a closed source China backed chat platform would definitely be a target for mass censorship. The only thing keeping them in line is public favour and soft power over the chat application space. This is a ticking time bomb, and everyone should have a contingency plan if this were to happen. May I remind you that Tencent also backs Activision Blizzard, who are the same people who banned a man from Hearthstone for pro-Hong Kong speech. This happened once, something very similar is going to happen again eventually, so let's be prepared. Element is immune to all these issues and is ways to easily navigate these problems. Not only is Element open source, not only can you self-host a Matrix instance, but Matrix allows you to encrypt your data, so that only people in that room or space can see it. Not even the people who run Element will be able to see it. Just about every base is covered. Censorship, just self-host. Prying eyes, encrypt your data. DMs are also encrypted by default, making Matrix.org by far the best platform to use direct message on. Even Signal requires your phone number, where Element doesn't. This is awesome, and it's great to have peace of mind on this. The open source free software nature of Element and Matrix.org means that you can be pretty much certain that it isn't spying on you. You can verify exactly what it's doing, and for that, it's the perfect replacement for Discord. We must stand up to Discord and their stupid tracking bullshit together, or else we're going to keep getting screwed over by many more companies that do this crap, and they'll just keep on getting away with it. 
If anything, that's a big reason to support Element and other open source projects, especially in the communication space. I recently interviewed a few people about this. Everyone pretty much cited the extra privacy as a massive benefit. The only thing that was a bit of a showstopper was screen share and some other things surrounding voice. Honestly, I'm not entirely phased by this, as you can use OBS Virtual Camera to get around this. Element Call is also coming around the corner, promising native voice over IP support inside the Matrix protocol. I actually tested it out with some friends, and so far it seems like a big upgrade over the embedded Jitsi method they are currently using. This will likely be out sometime in 2023, which is really exciting and addresses one of my major problems with Element. Now seems like a good time to jump in and get ready for that. One last thing. I have heard from some friends that Discord is often blocked in schools or in certain areas. Speaking of self-hosting, this can be used to get around internet filters at school and other places. Even the Matrix home server isn't usually blocked. This makes Element really appealing for those who want to access a chat app regardless of circumstance or firewall restrictions. But hey, you didn't hear this one from me. One of the barriers to entry is that because Element isn't that well known, some people may take a moment to get used to it. However, let's just skip that step as I'm going to tell you how to use Element so you can jump in right now. First thing you'll want to do is go to the Element website and download the client. You can also use the web version if you want to as well. When you open Element for the first time, you will see a login screen. I recommend busting out a pen and paper for this, as you'll be writing down your username and password, as well as a security key. First thing you'll want to do is select matrix.org as your home server. If you are self-hosting or part of a community that has their own Matrix server, use that instead. From here, enter your username and password, and you'll be given a security key. Write this key down as you will likely need it in future for verification. If you get stuck without it, you'll be locked out of your account, so be careful. Another way to verify yourself is to get Element on your phone. This will let you scan codes and log in really quickly, sort of like the new Steam Authenticator that was introduced this year. Once you are in Element, the first thing you'll want to do is change your icon. In the top left corner is an icon. By default, it will be a flat background with the first letter in your name. Click on it and then click All Settings. From there you will be able to change your icon and display name, as well as set up your audio and video stuff for voice chats. Below the home icon is the plus button, which you can use to create a new space. Next to space name, or home if no space is selected, there is another plus button. This is how you open DMs, start text and voice rooms, and even search for new rooms, which is a feature Discord doesn't have. From here it's pretty straightforward. If you want to send a message, click here, type out what you want to say, then press enter as per the usual. You can also upload files like GIFs and MP4s, and you can also be sure that it will actually upload due to the larger upload limit. You've also got all of the normal emojis. Finally, there's this menu where you can upload stickers, polls, and voice messages. These are mostly fun additions, and the poll feature is much nicer than using reactions to do the same thing. Speaking of reactions, you can do those as well, as well as replying, starting a thread, and a number of other things. Needless to say, you aren't trading in much from Discord to use Element. If anything, it has a good few extra features over Discord, and the missing stuff could easily be added later because, you know, open source and all. The only thing missing that I actually really wanted was events, but I can use polls as a substitute and get by just fine until that day. So, that's Element for you. Pretty good front-end for Matrix.org, and it's mostly what me and my friends use. However, did you know that there are other Matrix clients? Over the course of this video, I've been using Element and Matrix interchangeably, as if they are the same thing. In reality, due to the Matrix protocol being freely available to use, there are a ton of clients out there. This is similar to Better Discord, except you don't get banned for using it. Bruh. Some examples include Cine, which kind of looks and walks a bit like Discord, Neko, which is a QT based client, and Matrix, which, yes, is a real thing. Someone made a TUI Matrix client for the goddamn 3DS, and honestly, it just made my day. Okay, side note if anyone can get Matrix running, please tell me. I couldn't find any footage of it, and I need to see it. Please. Like, please. But yeah, there's a lot of variety. Element is currently the only one with voice chat, but since Element Call is coming out, which works across clients, that issue will get resolved in future. So, what can you do about this? I think the takeaway of the video should be that you need to be more careful which platforms you use, and to do your research before you use them. 
I learnt being open source and more transparent than Discord, as well as having a better focus on privacy, and being a more ethical substitute to Discord should be something to take note of. I ask that everyone try Element and also get your friends to move over. It's a wonderful thing to be there to help your friends with increasing their privacy on the internet. This is especially poignant as we are at the stage where companies that own these platforms have too much power and not enough respect for individual people's privacy. Be sure to check out Element, I have started a new Jazz Stash community on Matrix.org, which contains some of my sub-communities relating to my game Burbat and my TF2 server Mini Map Mayhem. That should be out by the time this video goes up, so be sure to jump in if you're looking to get started in front of the community. I'll have the link for that down in the description. And regardless of what ends up happening, I don't think it's a good idea to use a platform whose CEO got busted for data collection on his previous project. Just an idea though. Thanks for watching to the end. I hope you all take on board what I've said about privacy and using Element over Discord. I understand it's going to be a bit of an uphill battle, but he's hoping that from here on out people take notice and take action. One thing I'd be really happy about is if you shared this video to some people who are open to changing habits or wish for more privacy. I'd love if you guys shared the message and notified people about this. That's all from me. As always, thanks for watching and take care.